Hey there everyone, welcome back to Platinum Achievements. Today is January 12th at the time of recording. It's almost 9 o'clock. We're going to keep it real quiet tonight because we're going to be playing America's favorite game of Do Not Wake Sammy or It's Gonna Be a Bad Night. Let's check on him real quick. Sammy status knocked out because he didn't sleep today. You got a borderline ASMR episode today. So first of all, I want to thank everyone who watched and, you know, gave a little like to the first episode. It was pretty cool seeing the, honestly, the larger response than I thought I would get. Pretty awesome. Thanks, everyone. All right. What have I been playing? Oh, wait, no. I got to start with, uh, all right. The score right now, we are still at 95 Platinums. We're working on it. I'll explain it a bit. And gamer score is at 672,685. And that increase is from completing Garden Story. We did it within the time limit of Game Pass, booting it off the service. Garden Story, very fun game. Uh, I believe I talked a little bit about it last week, but I'll go a little more in depth this time as well. Very fun story. It's like a... Uh, I don't want to say Zelda, but it's top down like the old Zeldas or like Minute if you've played that. It's got some RPG elements, uh, some community base building elements as well, some forging, all that stuff. It's it's very fun. It's a very easy completion. Honestly, if you hopped on it real quick, like before the fifteenth, you could bang it out. It's not that bad. It's a it's a very fun game, very chill. There's some accessibility features that make it. Well, a cakewalk, like, you know, I, I use accessibility features a lot now just because it helps me get through these games a little quicker, uh, lets me get through more games with Sammy. You know, I don't, I don't really want to lose a lot of progress if it can be helped, if it's an option. So, uh, really cool having those accessibility features. I, I really enjoy one that games are doing that now, not so much that making it easier, but just having all these features that help people with disabilities play these sorts of games like colorblind modes. Um, I mean, brightness filters always been there, but more recently I've been using it a lot more. And even things like Celeste, where they really allow you to throttle down the difficulty, like infinite jumping and just, you know, a lot of helpful things. Uh, Planet of Lana had a couple as well that were really helpful. So good on the community. Good on the devs and Garden Story, definite recommend. I would say it's it's it, it could um I don't know if I'd go so far as to say it's worth the twenty bucks. I mean I'm glad I got it for free on Game Pass. Twenty bucks I wouldn't be mad at paying for it though. So take that for what it's worth. Goal progression uh, still at three games for this month. Uh, we included Garden Story this time. I guess it's not still, because when I did the last video, I wasn't at three, so I was at two before. It's called an increase of one, basic maths. And yeah, so we're at three out of five. I'm working on Alan Wake right now. That's not the footage you're seeing on screen, though, because the way that I'm playing it is I'm going through on easy, getting all the collectibles I can done with. Now, once I transition to nightmare mode, which honestly really isn't that difficult, I will record that and put it in one of these videos, but for now, it's just, it's not entertaining to watch me stop and pause and stop and pause and stop and pause, and the editing for that would just be such a nightmare. So, I have foregone that for a much more chill game, because we need a chill game right now. I'm gonna say that I'm playing Snake Pass in this video. That could change. It's really up in the air between that and Dead Rising 2 off the record. And why do we need a chill video? Because I thought I recorded an hour's worth of gameplay of me playing Anthem. Uh, I wasn't really happy with it while I was playing it because I was just constantly giving myself and eventually you guys whiplash. So I thought I had recorded it. Guess what? I hit the record button an odd amount of times. So it recorded 15 seconds and then it didn't record an hour and then it recorded another 16 seconds. And I was pretty peeved. Let me tell you. Do another check on Sam. Still passed out. Same position. Lovely. Okay, so uh, where were we? Um, 
yeah, Alan Wake, this is my fourth time playing it. It'll be the last time, I suppose, unless I'm playing for fun, because there's no other achievement lists and trophy lists that I have yet to exhaust. So that's cool. Uh, and yeah, Anthem I dabbled with. It, the collectibles in that game are such a pain with it just being RNG. Um, I'm trying to think if I've been playing anything else. I've been pretty good about sticking to one game at a time. So yeah, I don't believe... No, don't believe I've been playing anything else, which is cool. So there, boom. We're in and out of that section. Like I said, I'll have some Alan Wake footage for you guys in another video with another topic. But that's not this one. So let's move on to the main topic of this video. So there were, let me adjust my mic. There were some rumors, or there are some rumors, that Xbox is looking to release some of its first party titles on competing platforms. There's a whole lot of people that are very upset by this. Very upset, saying that there's no reason to buy an Xbox. That doesn't make sense. It's just, it's just like spitting in the face of their community. This, that, the other thing. And let me tell you one thing right now. Those people are pretty dumb. This, I think people are spelling the doom and gloom thing and it's going to be like, they're going to go the way of Sega. Go third party. That's not how... I and some other people are interpreting this news. First of all, just a rumor. It's not confirmed. But it makes sense for some of their... Lower tier is not the right word, but that's the phrase that I'm going to use. Some of their lower tier games, such as a Hi-Fi Rush, such as a Sea of Thieves, which are the two front runners. Uh, you're looking at Pentiment. Uh, you're looking at... Not that it's a quality game, but Bleeding Edge would be in the same tier category. I could see a game like Tell Me Why go into other platforms. And here's the main reason why I could see that happening. These games have been on Game Pass for years. They've been in the Xbox ecosystem for years. And aside from some other people slowly trickling in and maybe trying them on Game Pass or maybe buying them, they've exhausted the community. Like, Sea of Thieves isn't going to get a bunch of new players in the Xbox community. Like, if you're playing Sea of Thieves, you like it. If you're not, by this point, you don't like it. Also, people freaking out about Sea of Thieves, it's a six-year-old game. We've had it exclusive for six years. Calm down. Hi-Fi Rush, the other front-running rumor leader, it's been exclusive for a year at this point. I played Sea of Thieves for like 10 minutes. I got kicked off a boat into some water. I couldn't get back on the boat. I said I was done. I was just not a fan of it. Hi-Fi Rush, I plan on playing at some point soon. But, these games have been out for a while. They've had their community. And they're pretty critically acclaimed, at least those two. Now, what makes sense for Microsoft to do is release them on Nintendo. Release them on PlayStation, if it's, you know, if that's a thing. If they feel like doing that. Because it builds the community. It grows it. There's going to be so much more financial, you know, revenue alone being on those other platforms. Especially if it's not a Game Pass deal. If it's like, because I know they're trying to get Game Pass on the other systems. If it's just, hey, you have to, you have to spend, I don't know, let's call it 40 to $70 on these games. You're, you're, you're going to make a lot of money. And that's just going to help the studios fund their next projects. Maybe follow-ups to Hi-Fi Rush. Maybe more cool content for Sea of Thieves. And it's especially in Sea of Thieves' case, you're going to have a lot more players to play that game. It's going to keep that game active for longer. Because once people stop playing these games, they're not going to support them anymore, unfortunately. That's just how it works. The other issue some people saw was that you're, they're, you're, they're not taking away your games. You can still play these games. These aren't going to stop being exclusive on the Xbox platform when they go to a PlayStation or a Nintendo. That wouldn't make any sense. I just feel like the people that are complaining just do not understand how business works, how like any real facet of the game industry works. They're just mad that they can't play, or not even that they can't play, that other people on another piece of plastic are going to be able to play the same software that they get to play. It's a very weird 
hang up to have. And I, I really do not understand it. It just, it reeks of just like middle school console war bullshit. And these games being available in more places literally helps out everyone in the industry from fans to developers to the studios behind them to the platforms that are gonna well that currently house them and that will be housing them it just makes no sense why people are this upset by it now will i where i will say that there could be some fear that microsoft will stop doing consoles and will go like third party software publishing only the only way I could see that being in the future, as far as like a worry people should have, which again, I don't think that's the case at all. I would say if they start releasing, and I'm not saying putting, all right, let me start with the games and I'll caveat it. If they start releasing games like Halo, Forza, Gears of War, like their top shelf game IP, if you start seeing that come to the competing platforms, then I could see a little more concern about the Xbox system being irrelevant or in danger. It's, I think people are still hung up with the whole console issue when Xbox has made it very clear that they are more focused on the Xbox ecosystem. Now, the system itself, the Xbox, whichever version you got, that's just a cheap consumer-friendly way to access that ecosystem. But they've already shown and have been very successful putting their games on PC day and date with their console games. It's the same software. You're just you're just accessing it through a different machine, but you're always going through the Xbox ecosystem. It's important for people to understand that. I know we're very ingrained in like generations and physical consoles themselves. Sony's still doing that. Nintendo's still doing that, and they're super successful. Microsoft's seeing success in a different area, and that's where they're they're aiming to go. So I don't see this as a big deal. But the way I could see them putting these games, such as Gears, such as Halo, Forza, the, the bigger games, if these other systems allow just access to Game Pass, like you can just go in, and just play Xbox games just like you can on your phone or your PC. Or even the Xbox Now, you can just cloud stream it. That's where I see these top shelf games coming to the competing platforms a lot quicker than an actual PS5 release of these games supported with trophies. That's a whole different ball game. So, let's all calm down, take a chill pill, just enjoy playing games wherever we can play them. And just be happy that our games might be getting second and third lives by going to these competing platforms. It's not going to take anything away. We're all okay. Uncle Phil Spencer's got us nestled up. It's like a, he swallowed us in the warmth of games. And he's doing a good job. I know you're listening, Phil. And now we're going to check on the baby again. Baby Watch 2024. Still passed out. Let's hope he stays down for the night. Maybe I should have another, maybe I should do another topic because I'm pretty much exhausted with that. I just want to give my two cents, really. Let's see, I did write a few things. Um, okay, having to do with Anthem. Am I the only one that enjoys playing, like, dead video games? Like, especially, like, not especially, but I go on, like, my 360 every now and then, or I do backwards compatible, and I'll boost the dead multiplayer achievements, like I did, uh... Oh, what was it? Uh, the game... Oh, The Darkness. I did the first Darkness. That was that was a pain. But I did it. It was fun. It, you get in like a, a zen flow state. I did Unreal Tournament 3 last year. That was a blast. One, playing the game, because it's an arena shooter. It's very different than what we're used to games being now. But I just really enjoyed going back and playing those older games. I mean, they're rarer achievement lists and, you know, tr uh, trophy lists in some cases. They're rarer. It's fun to have them on the t on your account and not as like a boasting thing, but just being like, hey, I did it. Like, this is kind of an accomplishment within the, the achievement and trophy space. I, I just really enjoy that. So I'm, the reason I'm getting into this, I already mentioned I'm playing Anthem. 
Is it a dead game? I, <coughs> excuse me. It's not supported anymore, for sure. Like, they're done supporting it. But every time I load into free play, there's people playing. Like, they're still there. And, I, I mean, I don't know the exact numbers of people playing. I know it's not a lot, because the game has a lot of issues. But, man, I just, I just like playing games where the... And I mean, I like playing games that are active too, but I like I like playing the games that are like in their sunset years. People haven't touched them for a while. And honestly, you and your buddy could just hop into the multiplayer and just bang it out real quick. A lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoy it. I'm trying to think of some other dead games that I've played. Um, I did Unreal Tournament last year. The Darkness. Um, one of my evergreen games, sadly, is... a. Uh, Gears of War 3, and I would, I believe that's pretty dead, I'm, I can't be sure it's backwards compatible, but, um, I don't think a lot of people are still playing it, the people that are, are like the diehards, and I mean, there's enough to fill lobbies, but, it's not, it's not a lot, especially certain game modes, they're definitely dead, man, I would love to get seriously 3.0, that's like, if I can get that, that would be like, that would be like I could retire from achievement hunting type of deal. That and hitting a million gamer score. Uh, oh, wouldn't it be great if like I could, I could time it up to get seriously 3.0 for my millionth achievement gamer score. That'd be amazing. Sorry, I need another sip of water. Where do we go from here? It's, it's not been a long video so far. Um, I, I would like to keep these towards... Honestly, between the 30 minute and the hour mark, I think that, is it raining? Hmm. That would be like a good, uh, I feel like a good solid runtime. Like if I had a, a co-host like James, when I do the Tri-State Pop podcast, that's sometimes on this channel, sometimes not. He lost his voice at New Year's Eve and, you know, we haven't recorded since. Uh, like October or something like that. But if, if I get more people in here, I think the video will definitely go longer, but... We're, we're making slow progress, evolving this as we go. And for right now, you just got me. But that ain't so bad. Let me think. Uh, what else to talk about this episode? Uh, we did... We kind of did two topics. That was pretty cool. Yeah, okay, so let's... Let's... Hmm. Okay, so let's dive into my remaining games for this month. Uh, like I said, Alan Wake Remastered PS4. I'm slowly getting there. I'm on the third chapter. It's my least favorite chapter, I think, of the Alan Wake game, where you're you're running through the woods, you lose your gun, you're running from the caps, and I'm at like halfway through that mission. It's still a great game. I love Alan Wake, and I I think I could get this done by the end of this coming week. So by the nineteenth, by next recording, I should have this game done for sure. Uh, and then sitting on my little side table by my Xbox, I've got Watch Dogs Legion, and I've got FIFA 06 Road to the World Cup for the 360. Now, Road to the World Cup, I definitely plan on finishing. Watch Dogs Legion, I may hold off on, just because it's I have the permadeath ultra hard difficulty achievement left, and that's a pain. It's not fun. Especially when you lose one of your souped up agents like Aiden Pierce or the Assassin or uh, I think it's Wrench. When you lose them on a mission, oh boy, do you feel it. And I, ugh, man, that game sucks. Don't play Watch Dogs Legion. It's the worst of the series. You know you screwed up from a narrative sense with a Watch Dogs game when it's the best, uh, when the best story elements are the DLC involving Aiden Pierce from the first game. So. Watch Dogs, or not Watch Dogs, Ubisoft. I don't know what you were thinking with this game. Like, the concept was cool with being able to be any character, but when you have that, you don't have an actual character to invest in from a narrative perspective, which kind of sucks. But, oh, and also, like, there's no, like, um, there's no towers in the game. It's, you just have to unlock the map by literally driving around it. And exploring it. And that's just not fun. That's not what I go to an Ubisoft game for. Come on, know your audience. 
But, uh, yeah, FIFA 06 World Cup, I plan on finishing. Uh, I'm not that good at the game. It's a pain in the butt, but I'm not good at it. And then I think I'm going to tackle some smaller PS Plus games, uh, like uh, End Endling. I think they gave that away. They gave two versions out. I want to tackle PS Plus games because my subscription is going to end in June, and I really want to maximize what I get out of the the service because, and I I just have Essential, so I just I'm just playing the monthly games that I've been given, but. I just I don't know if I can justify the eighty dollars a year. I might I might relook at what's left on the service that I have left to tackle and go from there. Who knows? I might re up it, but right now I don't plan to. So I'm really trying to bang out as many PS Plus required games as I can. So we have the monthly games. We have something like Anthem, which is online only. So be working on that. And then there's a couple Game Pass games that I really want to play, like uh, Bramble, uh, Loot River looks really cool, Hi Fi Rush. There's so many, so many games, not enough time, especially when you have a little baby boy bouncing around. Okay, really cuts into game time. Like you just pray that you're not tired by the time they go down, and then you can get a couple hours of gaming in. Oh, also I want to do a lot of uh. A lot of, um, oh, what's the phrase? What am I looking for? Narrative games. So I have Life is Strange True Colors, uh, uh, As As Dusk Falls. I started but didn't really get into it. I think I tried it at work the one day using xCloud and it, it worked well enough. But things like that, I really want to work on some narrative games as well. So I got plans. I got plans. Oh, uh. Road Road 96. I love Road 96. I have the Mile Zero prequel game. I want to get to that too. Just so many games. And then Suicide Squad Kills just sleep comes out at the end of the month. We know about that. We talked about that already last week. So, so many games in the backlog and on the docket that just got to buckle down and focus on them, you know? When I'm not doing this stuff, I'm really trying to stay consistent with this. Which is why I'm recording it <laughs> nine o'clock on a Friday night while my baby sleeps. So I think I think we've padded out the episode a good chunk. So let's dive into uh, an upcoming grant. Uh, uh, but uh, bleh, bleh, why can't I talk? Let me have some water. Let me get some water in my mouth. All right, we come to the point in the show where I'm going to highlight an upcoming game. And that game actually releases on Game Pass day and date next week. One week from tonight. January 19th. I didn't realize it was an exclusive on Xbox. It's on Steam too if you want to play it there. It's called Pal World. And if my skills have improved, you should be seeing a trailer for it right now. Now here's the key. You may be thinking, and hopefully I can time this right so I tell you this before it pops up in the video. You may be thinking, Ray, this looks just like Pokemon. Except, you know, better looking. And you'd be right. Except, you and some of your palmons, whatever the hell they want to call themselves, you got guns, baby. You are lighting people up. It is crazy cool looking. And there's some community building aspects which look really cool. It looks like you actually build a community with these pals. I guess they're called. I don't know. And there's apparently a hundred of them for you to collect and capture and just pump full of lead. It looks so ridiculous. But it's so good at the same time, and it's so cool that I guess, I guess Microsoft either bought the game or acquired the studio, I don't know which, but it looks so good, and I'm so glad I'm going to be able to play a Pokemon-like game that's not Nexomon, because I have Nexomon, I think, on PlayStation and maybe on Xbox as well at this point, but just playing a Pokemon game on a system where I can get achievements or trophies. Cannot wait for this game. My god. One week. Lastly, to round out this week's episode... Uh, it's been a little scatterbrained. I honestly thought the Xbox Multiplat thing would go a little longer, but I guess I just ran through my points pretty quickly. Um, yeah, let's do the recommended game. And due to the fact that it's getting a sequel, hopefully this year at some point, uh, let's talk about Wolf Among Us. Speaking of narrative games from earlier, 
and hopefully the trailer's on screen as well here. Otherwise, just enjoy that Snake Pass gameplay, baby. Snake Pass is a great game, too, if you haven't tried it. It's really fun. Wolf Among Us, it is... How to describe it effectively? Um, fairy tale creatures from, you know, Snow White and the Big Bad Wolf, you know, like, are fairy tale creatures. They are called... I believe they're called fables in the game. I know the, the comic itself is that it's based on. And it's basically they are in... Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be modern day New York or like maybe 90s New York, but they're in the real world. They're kind of hidden, but also out in the open. And you play as Big B, the big bad wolf. You are the sheriff of, uh, what do they call it? It's Maybe it's Fable Town, Fableton. And someone is going around and killing other fables. And fables, I guess, are notoriously hard to kill. Like they're borderline superhuman in some way, like very durable, but someone's going around just decapitating fables and killing them, and it's your job to track them down, you come across a whole bunch of fun uh, twists on the fables or the uh, fairy tales that we've come to know, like I think Sleeping Beauty is in there, Prince Charming, the Jersey Devil's in there at one point, which is pretty funny, uh, the Big Bad Wolf clearly, uh, I think the three little pigs are in there. It's, or maybe it's just one little pig at this point. I don't remember, but very fun narrative game. The only trophy or achievement you really have to look out for is unlocking all of the like character pages, which you unlock by meeting a new character. I think there's one where there's a, or maybe two where there's like split paths. So you have to replay a couple sections or two, but nothing too crazy. It's a very easy completion. Highly recommend it. It's one of Telltale's much better games. It's definitely at the higher end of their output with like a Tales from the Borderlands and the first season of Walking Dead. I think my father-in-law just came home. Hey, Bill. <laughs> Foxy, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Let me tell you, thank God this kid can sleep through this dog barking because we would be in some serious trouble if she, if he could not. Um, now that I, I mean, I was basically done talking about Fables. Definitely recommend, go try it out. It's, it's a very good game and the sequel's coming out soon so definitely get on that and with that it looks like uh looks like we finished another episode pretty cool guys two weeks in a row high five so as always thank you for watching the video it means a great deal you continuing to watch the content that i do put out if you can give the video a like subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the videos that come out i guess hit the bell i don't know what i'm supposed to say anymore i'm not a big shot youtuber but if you want to ring the bell and get notified, that'd be cool, too. Um, what else we got? Nothing else? Is that it? Uh, okay, yeah, Sammy's still asleep, so we're all good. Again, thanks for watching, and keep on hunting, boys and girls. Bye.